Hey, welcome to the channel. How have you guys been? Today I've got a very good juicy one for you. This is my first out of body experience that I'd ever went through. And I tell you, it's a doozy. And only alive this day because of God's mercy and God's grace. When I went through this out of body experience, it was a horrendously horrible experience. I was too ashamed to talk to anybody about. And when I had to finally come out and talk about it, to even get the help I was needing, because my body was shutting down when all this came to pass, that I'm only here because of the grace of God. And I hope you guys can stick around, enjoy it, and God bless. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. I look forward to having you guys on board, and let's get into it. So I never really had much of a childhood from the time I moved in with him. And I was kind of glad because it's helped me out a lot through life. But one of the repercussions to that was trying to find things that would occupy my mind and just my own little escapes. And so somehow, like I never got to spend a ton of time one on one even though I lived with the old man. He was living in a trailer that was sitting out right behind the house. And I was staying in the new, newly being built house. It had concrete floors and there was drywall up on the walls. The windows were in, had a shingled roof and the siding was on the outside of the house. And it remained like that. For I think just about two years until I finally got to move away from him. But in that time, I'd been living in that house because he considered the 52-foot um, trailer to be too small for um, a man and a soon-to-be teenager. So he had me living out there. And somehow or another, it was brought up about because there was a lot of wanting to experiment with drugs and whatnot just feeling like being so oppressed that I'd seen my dad he drank lots and there were times where I'd, I'd hear them the adults talking about him getting into using cocaine and I kind of was understanding that that was just part of life and I didn't have any kind of a means whatsoever to be able to really go out and afford alcohol or even marijuana or um, cocaine especially right and living in the small town that we were in um, he'd smoke pot with me once and I really liked that feeling of just being with the mind expanded, I guess. Um, it was more so being able to connect with my dad on some kind of a level where it wasn't just 
being sitting under a sleep driver. So somehow or another, it was brought up at school. One of the times when I was talking around with some of the other people in class, they'd mentioned that um, gasoline will get you high. And me being young and dumb and full of gum, I decided, hey, maybe I'll try this out. And the dumbass, I was the first time, I think, I even tried to sip it. So I thought that's what you had to do. Then I started to catch on that it wasn't at all having to drink it. You just had to smell it and you'd get high. And so there was about a month long period there where I got into huffing gas. Biggest mistake of my life. And it was weird because, I mean, I'd gone to church and stuff when I was younger, but... Um, I hadn't spent any kind of major time in it. My dad was an atheist. My mom was um, a Christian, and she'd make us say our prayers and everything growing up. And that was the extent of my knowledge of God at that point. And after about a month of huffing gas, the damages that were obviously being done to uh, my brain and my mind, I was continuously having just uh, insanely far out hallucinations and not knowing any better. And I didn't talk to anyone because I brought it up once at school and I got ridiculed about being, um, being so brain dead that you'd even try it. And I was like, no, no, I was just joking. So I brushed it off and I kept it to myself. And after about this month-long period of doing it, I ended up one morning when I woke up and I went and started huffing again. First thing, I'd uh, felt this wicked pain inside of my chest and it wasn't something I'd ever felt before. And then I heard something that didn't sound like it was on the physical plane, like how you can hear somebody's inside the house calling you or even outside of a room calling you or next door calling you, right? It wasn't on this plane. And it was this horrifying, horrifying yellow. And I want my parcel. And it's just the weirdest thing because I had no idea what it meant, but I felt this fear come over me. And I ended up with goosebumps all over my whole body. And I was so petrified. And as I went and turned my head, it was like everything around me did not no longer look even close to the same. And now, once I got older, I'd done mushrooms, I've done acid, and I've done all these other hallucinogens, and none of them even registered the way it did that day. And I was seeing into another plane of existence, and... There was this humongously tall, like looked almost like a really well-built person. And then all I could feel was something shoot through me. It's a red devil. And then I looked over and it was like coming from, let's say, the north. And it looked like it was very far off. But, I mean, like, I was sitting inside of one of the rooms of the house. So there's no way I could see through except for the back sliding door. But I was able to see past all these walls. And in one way, I was seeing, like, as if I had an x-ray vision for everything that was surrounding me outside of the house and to the back of the property. And then even beyond that, I was also seeing into another realm. And I'd seen this big, tall silhouette coming towards me from afar off and then it took everything to try and make my body move and because of how scared I was I got up to try and run to my bedroom and I remember when I was younger my mom always said make sure you say your prayers because you're never going to know if you're going to die in the middle of the night and if you are you want the Lord to come take you so she helped us get up with prayer so I was running with all that I had to get into my room because I wanted to go pray at the end of my bed like I'd done when I was younger because I was so afraid of whatever it was I was feeling. And then as I ran in, I jumped 
down as hard as possible to get onto my knees, and it was a concrete floor. And I remember hearing this just wickedly gross popping, cracking sound when, when my knees hit the concrete. And I just did not care because I knew my body was failing me. And so I remember I just started praying. And as I started praying, there were these three white lights that came down from above me, directly above, and came down and entered into my head. And um, the only thing I was hearing was, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Three times I'd heard it because there was three lights that came down. And then that same silhouette that was off and coming towards me had to stop where it was. And then all of a sudden, the same way it sounds like if you hear somebody praying in tongues, that was the same way I was hearing inside of my being that those three lights that came down and that were right there with me were somehow protecting me. And that's all I could hear was that praying in tongues sound coming from them and then I could see as that big silhouetted person or the angel whatever it was the fallen one or the demon whatever it was was so mad I said I'm gonna be back for you this is not the end of it and then as it turned around to leave I slowly started just coming to a place of peace and tranquility. Like everything was going to be okay. And then I was aware that I wasn't breathing proper. Like I was gasping for breaths just periodically. And then, so I go into the house and I'm like afraid to tell my dad of what I was doing and what had just transpired and took place because I knew he'd be really mad. So... As I went in the house to tell him, I was just crying by this point, right? Because at this point, it's been about a half hour past all, after all this stuff's passed. And then I'm still trying to process this. And I'm becoming aware of what just transpired. And so as I go in and start trying to tell my dad, and I'm crying so hard. Because I'm aware that I should be dead right now but only by God's grace that I was kept alive through it and that God sent those angels down to protect me at that point because I guess I was still on the border of being quite innocent. I hadn't gone out and done a ton of the badder stuff I got into in my teenage years, right? So it was only by God's grace that day that I was kept alive. And then it was weird because when I got back up, even before I went in to go talk to my dad as I stood up, I felt in my knees just this horrible cracking type sound as I was trying to straighten my legs out. And then just before those lights came back out of me and then took off to go back up, it was like they circled around me and then they left. And then as I started walking, there was no more sound, no more pain. It didn't hurt anymore. But that's when I started processing everything and trying to figure out what it was that just took place. So then when I ended up inside the house and I'm trying to tell my dad, hey, I kind of messed up, you're going to be mad, but I think I should go to the hospital because um, I should have just died. He's like, what? So I explained to him everything that happened. He takes me up to the hospital. I'm like, oh, I know you're going to be mad at me. Please don't be me. And I was like crying. I was like, don't worry, don't worry. I just want to make sure you're going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Don't worry about it. And as we got up to the hospital, and the doctor there starts examining me, and he takes my sweater off, it was the weirdest thing because there were perfectly red outlines, the shape of my lungs, on my chest, on the front and on the back. And the doctor says, I've never seen anything like this. And so we'd explained about what had happened and he checked me out. He said, it's just something he's going to keep his eyes on. And he's like, by the looks of it, we should be keeping him in and keeping an eye on him because anybody who would have gone through something like that should probably not be alive. Their organs and everything should be shutting down, especially 
if they'd been using it to such an excess, their blood, their blood will even become poisoned, right? By having so much of this, um, the gas chemicals and that inside of them. And because of everything and how it turned out that day, I'd never again huffed gas after that. And I hope that anyone else out there that listens to this or watches it, if you know of anybody out there that is thinking about doing that or doing it, tell them it's so not worth it. Everything, it'll mess up for you, and especially later in life, you'll start realizing the damage it really does to your brain because it kills brain cells completely. And only because of God keeping me alive for whatever purpose he has called me to that I was spared that day but lots of people you still hear are not spared when they're out huffing solvents or huffing gas or huffing any kind of chemical so I'll just say a prayer with you and the hopes that you like this one if so like comment subscribe and gracious heavenly father we just come to you in the loving name of jesus and we just thank you lord for your guidance your strength your acceptance and all your understanding we ask you to close the coat us with a hedge of protection and the blood of jesus put a helmet of salvation upon us the breastplate of righteousness the belt of truth Shoe our feet with the good news of the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, the double-edged sword of the Spirit. And I ask you, Heavenly Father, that if there's anyone who this message could possibly reach out to and help, to help them avoid making the same mistakes I did, I just pray that this will reach out and be a useful tool for your kingdom, Lord. All the honor, glory, and praise be given to you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. And I also pray for anyone else out there who's in need of a breakthrough from strongholds. Anybody who is going through hard times right now, just know if you are struggling with any kind of strongholds in your life, just know the devil only goes after and attacks what is truly valuable and has a calling. The greater the calling upon you, the bigger the attacks are going to be against you. Because when you're living right and living for God, that's when the enemy attacks. Is because he doesn't want you living right. Doesn't want you to be blessed. Doesn't want God to continuously be the head of your life. Because when you're living right with God, then the devil wants to try and separate that and mess that up so for all of you who are going through any kind of hardships right now i just pray the protection of the lord will be over you your family your loved ones your bloodline and may god just put a spirit of peace upon you your mind your family and all that you're going through at this time thank you lord jesus Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And if you have any questions or anything you'd like to know about this whole ordeal, feel free to ask down below. And till the next time, God bless, and I love you all. May God protect you all the days of your life, and may you have a blessed week.